Hey there, welcome back. Now a while ago I did some videos on the iHost from Sonoff and there were a couple of questions about whether you could load Home Assistant onto this device. Now Sonoff has just released an official version where you can actually upload the Home Assistant so I'm going to show you today how that works. So the first thing we need to do is upgrade the firmware. I hadn't used the iHost in a while and you can see here that it's got this new functionality called Boot AHA OS on iHost. So let's try it out. All right. So following the instructions here, we need to plug in our micro SD card into the computer. We need either Raspberry Pi Imager or the Bellina Etcher. And then we can visit the iHost source code project over here and then we want to download this one the haios ihost image so we'll select that and that will then download there we have our image so now we can just go into the raspberry pi imager we can choose the device and we're going to select a no filtering we're going to go across here we're going to select a custom image and we're going to select that what we've just downloaded and then we're going to go to storage and we're going to select the SD card reader and then we're going to start we don't worry about this we just go would you like to apply no we just go straight ahead yes it's going to erase it so once we've downloaded that we're going to insert the card into the iHost connect it to the power and the network and then we're going to, then we're going to repeatedly press the mute button on the top when it's starting up until the LED strip enters a blue breathing light pattern and this will show that the iHost has changed to into the Home Assistant. So if we go along to our router you can see here that we've got Home Assistant is already appearing there and if I type in homeassistant.local we have it busy preparing over here. Isn't this exciting? So there we go we can now create the star smart home so let's create that. We'll put in our password, confirm and create account. Select our address. This is not my real address. And we go next. Turn all of these on and we'll go next. So you can see already it's found a whole lot of devices in my home. We'll press the finish button and there we go. We've got Home Assistant up and running on the iHost. So let's just go and have a look and see what it's saying about the hardware. So if we look here, storage, it's using 7% of the 50 gigabytes of storage. Hardware, it's showing as the iHost. Let's see what else, if we've got any other information here about hardware. No, it doesn't seem to have. Um, it's saying the dashboard was updated. So we can see there our processor is running 2% and our memory, we've got 4 gigs, currently using 0.5 gigs of that. So let's just go back here. We know that iHost has the Zigbee. So let's go and see if we can add the Zigbee ZHA integration. So we'll go along there. And there we go. It's discovered the Zigbee radio. We'll submit that. We'll say erase and create a new network. And there we go. It's all working. We've got our Zigbee. So let's just go and see if we can add a Zigbee device. So I'm going to load one of these uh, Sonoff Zigbee temperature humidity sensors. We'll put that into pairing mode. And there we go. Picked it up immediately. Wow. There we go. So we've got it running. Now, one thing that they do say, we'll just select that in the kitchen there like that. One thing they do say is that you are limited to the add-ons that you can select. So you don't have any add-ons. Let's just see what we can. So it said that I couldn't load things like Node Red and Studio Code Server. So let's just try that. And this is apparently because it's got, ah, this is not compatible. There we go. So it's got a 32-bit processor, not a 64. And because of that, we are limited on some of the add-ons that we can add to this device. But let's go and add the file extorer, ex editor, file editor, for example. While that's running, let's just go and see what version we are on. No updates available. And now we can add this to sidebar and we can start it. And there we go. You've got your file editor. So that is all working. So yeah, pretty amazing. Easy way to install it. No opening the box up and having to um, flash things or anything like that. 
as simple as that. So overall, this is a pretty cost-effective way of running Home Assistant, as long as you're aware that you can't run Node-RED or Studio Code Server. So let me know in the comments below what you think of this device running Home Assistant. And if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.